the name that I put on this is his yoke or yours. A yoke is something that you put around a horse's neck. So the horse can get work done. And so we're the same way, but a lot of times we put our own yoke, we want to do it in our own means. And that's not what God told us. His yoke is easy. Burden is light. We can fulfill the mission that God has got us on if we simply follow his directions. But guys, sometimes it, our worldly desires prevent us from looking to God for everything that happens. Uh, praising him during the good times and praising him in the bad times. Scripture is full of persecution. The scripture says, blessed are you who are persecuted for my namesake. And we've got to be sold on the gospel. If other people are going to believe it. We were talking about war this morning before uh, service. And uh, one of the things in my life, even when I was running wild, I wasn't afraid to die. I just wasn't afraid of death. And that, that led me to do things that were crazy because I didn't fear what the outcome would be. And guys, two tours in Vietnam, and even I wasn't saved when I went to Vietnam. And so I didn't live like a Christian should live but I had no fear. And that's why I signed up for a second tour. At any moment, you could be dead. Bullet going through your head, any moment. And if you focus on that, you end up being worthless. And so we need to focus on the mission of head, ahead, no matter what happens. No matter what. We simply say, yes, Lord, okay? We don't say, as Christians, we don't say no, Lord. We don't have the authority to disobey the word of God. We just don't. We are owned by him. So, his yoke or yours, his will or yours, who do you think is better qualified to give you counsel on how to live? So, uh, in your bulletin it says, our invitation from Jesus. He tells us to come, take, learn, and trust. He tells us this. So we've got to come to him. We've got to take what he is offering for us. We've got to learn about him in the scriptures. I mean, CC is, is always watching videos of other pastors, and, and I think it's pretty cool that She's not frustrated with them because they're not like me. But anyway, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but anyway, she's always searching the scriptures. My gosh, isn't that, what an encouragement to me. Her and Larry, they're into God's word. We all need to be into God's word because if we don't know God's word, we don't know how to react in certain situations. And so the first thing is, come to him. Luke chapter 11, verse 1 says, One day, Jesus was praying. Jesus, God was praying to the Father. Now this is really powerful, because Jesus being God if he knew it was necessary to pray to the Father and keep that connection going, we need to take that example. We do. What's really cool about prayer, the Bible says pray without ceasing. That doesn't mean you have your head down and your hands folded and your eyes closed. 
praying is communication. Driving down the road, you see something going on, pray. God already knows about it, but he wants to hear from you. Make sure you pray in Jesus' name. Because that's where the power is. One day, Jesus was praying. We need to look at his model. He kind of went off from the rest so he could communicate with his Father. We need times in our lives that we're not surrounded by a whole bunch of people, that we can focus on our relationship with God. It's very powerful stuff, man. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, wouldn't you like to hear the prayers? What, what, was, he talk, what was he talking to his father about? You know. When he finished, one of his disciples, so now, a disciple is not merely someone who's hanging around. A disciple is somebody that is fully committed. That's why scripture says we are to go to and make disciples of all nations. Starting right here in Flowery Branch. You know, people are watching us. It said, Lord, teach us. Oh my gosh. Petitioning the Lord to teach us to do what Jesus did, just did. Teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. Teach us. And the second thing is we need to take what he offers. He offers salvation. He offers peace in the middle of the trial. Just like in Vietnam, no fear of death. We don't fear what the world can do to us because we are servants of the Most High God. And nothing can happen to us unless God allows it. Don't fear death. Death is your graduation party. I love doing funerals for saved people. While everybody's mourning, I said, don't mourn, that ain't her or that ain't him. He's in heaven dancing, no more wheelchairs. He's more alive now than he ever was on this earth. Full of life. Well, that's a great time, man. Funerals are a great time to present what God's people uh, go through and where they are when they graduate. It's a celebration. I don't mourn funerals. I didn't mourn my mother's funeral. I was excited that she's not in any more pain. Nobody can take advantage of her anymore. Her death to me was an exciting time. And then three, we need to learn from God. How do you do that? Well, you uh, read his word. If you have questions, you ask somebody who may know. In Numbers, I love this. This is the Old Testament, and it's full of stuff for us. Numbers chapter 20, verses 1 through 11. It's a great, great story. In the first month, the whole Israelite community, God's people, okay, arrived at the desert of Zim. And they stayed at Kadesh. Can you imagine what that meant? This was just not a little barbecue party. A whole nation migrating across the desert. There's a whole lot of issues that had to take place to make that happen. You know, God provided the manna. You know, but it didn't prevent the people from grumbling. One of the things that I know is if you're grumbling, you're not focused on the Lord. 
focused on yourself. So it's your yoke that you're carrying at that point. There, Miriam, anybody know who Miriam is? Moses' sister? Miriam died and was buried. Now, there was no water for the community. And the people gathered in opposition to Moses and Aaron. Think about that. God's people, God's servant, Moses and Aaron. God is leading them in this whole, moving this whole nation of people. What do they do? They take the leader that God provided and they whine and complain to him. God's man. They stood in opposition to the very men that God put in leadership. Guys, it happens still today. Still today. People out there who call themselves Christians will come against God's leadership. Now there's sometimes that, that you know people will call themselves God's leaders, but the fruit of their life would prove them different. You don't come against them, you just don't receive it from them. Find a place where God's word is taught. Right? You can't go wrong with that. But they gathered in opposition to Moses and Aaron. Can you imagine what that might have looked like? A mob of God's people coming to oppose God's leadership. But they did. They did. People who say that they are Christians will oppose you. Why? Because if you're doing God's will and they are not, they have got to oppose you to make you look bad. God knows the truth. Don't worry about that kind of stuff, man. They quarreled with Moses arguing with him and said if only we had died what a pity party they were showing right there it'd be better to be dead than to be here with you if only we had died when our brothers fell dead before the Lord you know in this movement there was a lot of death and a lot of births you know uh, most of the people of Israel didn't make it. They quarreled with Moses and said, "If you only had, if we only had died when our brothers fell dead before the Lord." That's kind of a key statement because he's saying they fell dead before the Lord. Obviously. God's had something to do with it. Why did you... <laughs> why did you bring the Lord's community into this desert? He was admitting that these are God's people, but he is not admitting that Moses is God's servant. Isn't that sad? Why did you bring the Lord's community into this desert that we and our livestock should die here? Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to this terrible place? They seem to have forgotten that they were slaves in Egypt. They had to work tirelessly for nothing except their existence. And now, on this journey that God is setting the stage for, they are complaining. Do you guys see the correlation between that and what's going on now? 
only a few will enter therein. Only a few. It's our mission to reach all people. And so we've got to be able to welcome all people and love them here, even when they're unlovable. That's what won me over. It wasn't the preaching or wasn't anything else. It was somebody that was willing to love me in my mess. And then I found people that had been through the same stuff as me. You know, changed my life. And they continue the whining. It has no grain or figs, grapevines or pomegranates. And yet they are still alive. And there's no water to drink. Do you think that if any of them had a prayed to God, instead of bashing Moses and Aaron, that maybe things would have been different? That's our charge, guys. We need to be praying. We don't need to go through any pastor to reach God's ears. Take whatever I say and compare it to Scripture. And if it's not right, discard it. But tell me about it one-on-one. -on -one. So, after all this complaining, Moses and Aaron went from the assembly to the entrance to the tent of meeting and fell down. And the glory of the Lord appeared to them. They surrendered themselves to God to receive counsel. Because this was a big problem. You've got an entire nation coming against you. What do you do? Man, you pray. The Lord said to Moses, isn't it cool that back then they had a personal, audible relationship with God? the leadership, God's, God's men. Take the staff and you and your brother Aaron gather the assembly together. So now you've got all these complainers and whiners and God is saying, get them all together. Now, Moses has heard this kind of stuff before because when he was run out of Egypt and then years later, God tell him, go back to Egypt. Something that would almost seem impossible. If you're thinking about the, the, the worldly ways of doing things. Speak to that rock. Do you know that God is real serious about us following his directions? Not adding stuff in, not taking stuff away. But here it says, speak to that rock before their eyes. Make sure that they are watching you. And it will pour out its water. The solution to the problem. God gave Moses the ability to provide for the people. There was no question in this that it was God doing it. Right. Because rocks don't leak. This don't happen. So you will bring water out of the rock for the community. So they and their livestock can drink. Moses petitioned God for a solution to a problem, and God reacted. We need to be positioning God for the stuff that's going on in our lives. Because he will respond, and a lot of times it's not in what you think. It's not how you think he should respond, but he'll respond. So Moses took the staff from the Lord's presence just as he commanded him. Okay, so far this is good. God told him what to do, and he, he was starting to implement it. He and Aaron gathered the assembly together. It's all good so far. In front of the rock, and Moses said to them, this is where it gets carnal. 
Listen, you rebels. He's talking to the people that were just in his face. Listen, you rebels, must we bring you water out of this rock? See, all this stuff, God didn't tell him to do this. You know. Then Moses raised him his arm and struck the rock. Twice with his staff. Now, if you're paying attention to what we just read, God told Moses to speak to the rock. But he was angry with these people that were attacking him. So he put on the yoke himself. Water gushed out. God wanted the people to have what they need to survive. Water gushed out and the community and their livestock drank. The next verse is very telling. We need to trust God, right? So I said, but, but the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, because you did not trust in me enough to honor me, when we do what God says, we are honoring him because the Bible says so. To honor me as holy in the sight of the Israelites, you will not bring this community into the land I give them. See, the promise was Moses would lead the people into the promised land. That's pretty cool. Now, because of his actions, the people are going to still go to the promised land, but he won't be able to go. He's not going to receive the blessing because of his rebellion. Think about that, guys. When, you want, when you're trying to do God's will in your own strength, or your way. Guys, it doesn't work. We lose the reward. Now, if you're really saved, it doesn't mean you're not going to heaven. It just means you're not going to get the reward God promised. So we need to be really conscious of what we say and do, do all things as unto the Lord, right? And your speech... Sometimes in my life, I will speak words that God didn't tell me to speak. And I end up paying a price for it. I need to realize that everything that comes out of my mouth it's designed to minister to other people. So off-color jokes, I can't say that anymore. Now I can have fun with Michael. This Michael. We have fun together, man. But a lot of the stuff I tell him is not stuff God told me to tell him. But I love him. I want him to be blessed. But I'm not all there yet. Some of you may have noticed. I've got some things that God is working on me with. And I'm happy about that. One of them is not being frustrated because my wife's not here. You know, the potential for me to be angry is there. And not with Judy, but with her mother. Guys. It's God's will that Judy would be there tending to her elderly mother. And that gives me peace. You know, I, so I pray for Judy not to be frustrated. You know, uh, I pray for Judy's mom. I don't, I'm not specific because I'm not going to order God around. She's 92, so I'm going home. But... We just need to be examples, okay? I hope that you're paying attention to this message from God and that we will take his scripture and live it out. And I hate to say to the best of our ability because it ain't our ability. 
It's the Holy Spirit in us. I pray that we would not negate the power of the Holy Spirit that's in us. I pray for that. We all need to depend on Him. That's why God sent Him into us. So that we would be able to have something in our lives that's dependable and true. God never speaks to us something that's contradictory to His Word. So examine things that people are saying to you according to His Word. He says homosexual offenders shall not enter the kingdom of God. And yet some people think that they can be pastors. Guys, how sad is that that people take the word of God and negate the stuff that they don't want to live out. But we, as followers of Christ, must show by our example that the Bible is true and that it works. We need to be sold on the product. The product is the gospel. And every word of it is true. Amen? Mm -hmm. Father, thank you so much for your word. We thank you that uh, you have given us the Holy Spirit to lead us, to teach us, to direct us. Father, may, we, may, we, may our ears be open to the communication. May our minds be open to the Holy Spirit's leadership. And so, Father, we're grateful that you love us enough to give him to us. Father, I pray that uh, as we leave this place today, that we will take you seriously in everything we say and do. Because you own us if we're truly saved. Lord, may we have words of encouragement for those who think that they're saved, but are not. Lord, uh, only you, only you can reach into the hearts of people that are wearing their own yoke. So, Father, as we're uh, ending this part of our time together, Lord, I, I pray for the offering. I pray that uh, it would meet our needs and that you would stretch it to do that. Thank you, Father, for that. Our needs are met because of you, God. And Lord, uh, we're getting ready to break bread together. Your scriptures tells us to break bread with one another. And we're grateful that we have the opportunity every Sunday to sit down and, and uh, laugh together and eat together and rejoice in your bounty. So God, we ask that you would bless our food. Lord, that it would give us the strength we need to do your will. Uh, and we pray in Jesus' name, amen.